Now I will show you how to build an interactive prototype of our delivery service app from scratch. In general, if you have ever used graphic editors, then almost everything will be intuitive for you. Although there are some features where common sense doesn't work that well. I'll make it clear, don't worry. Okay, let's go. Let's start with a monitoring page. As you can see, we have here a panel with the main menu on top. There is an area with lists of tasks and drivers and a map with the same tasks and drivers. First of all, you have to set the width of the prototype and create a modular grid. Most of our users will work with the app on desktop computers. Then most often there will be either 1920 or 1280 pixel screens. Better pick a smaller 1280 width and taking into account the browser frame and gaps on the edge of the monitor, we'll select 1200 pixels. Right click in the empty area, select grids and guides, create guides, and then there is a 1200 pixels preset. We don't have a lot of UI elements, therefore we'll be okay with 12 columns. That's it. Don't forget to save the project. We start to build our prototype with the container blocks. We move from large containers to small ones. The biggest container in the map area is the background. Let's make a screenshot of the map and paste it there. It suggests reducing the quality of the picture. It will reduce the source file size, but if we want the prototype to look nice on Retina screens, then click No. Next, put a screenshot in the upper left corner. Zero, zero. I have a Retina screen, so the screenshot was inserted twice as large. We divide this size by two and reduce it. It sticks out a little bit beyond the border of our prototype. We minimize the size by hands holding shift to keep the proportions. Now add the block to the main menu. We need a rectangle. Drag it from the library and set it to 00, 0 1200 width and height is 60. Then make the background of the page darker. Go to the page style, background. Okay. Let's see what we got. Actually, allows you to view the prototype as HTML page at any time. Click Publish, Preview, or better to remember this shortcut. And here we are. The prototype is better placed in the center of the window. So for this, go to the same page style and set the central alignment. That's better. Next, we mark the least area. Just copy the already created rectangle and drag it here. It's nice to keep the same paddings everywhere. Suppose we take 10 pixels from the edge and 20 pixels vertically. That's just a prototype and of course it's not necessary to spend time on keeping strictly the same paddings everywhere. But we should remember that it's still your main and final deliverable and your client used to feel that he pays mostly for the interactive prototype. So believe me, when this deliverable looks nice and neat, you'll enjoy your work way more and also the client will be impressed and satisfied. Now it's the details time. Take the title and make a logo out of it. Next is the search field. We copy the rectangle reduce it and set a slightly darker shade so the boundaries of this field can be seen. And we add an icon so the user can immediately identify it as a search field. There are many different icon libraries on the internet. You can use any of them to your taste. We step 10 pixels back from the beginning of the search field. I also need some hint text. In Azure, you can write not only in text objects, but also directly in any shapes. Next, the profile button. We show a gray circle for a user picture. 
to do it, we copy the gray input field and click on this point. And here we have a list of available shapes. And we add the name. And to make it clear, the drop down menu shows up on the click. We insert the down arrow icon. Now the menu. We copy text labels, write the menu items names. For alignment, it's better to use the built in functions. That's it, the static menu is ready. Let's add some interactive now. To make the user intuitively feel that the interactive elements are ready to start interacting with him, they must somehow react to the mouse pointer. Take the search field first. To change the hover style, we select the interaction styles, mouse over, and let's say we want a slightly darker edge line on hover. Preview is fine. Now the same for menu items and profile. We can change the color of the text. We select all the captions holding Ctrl key and set the mouse over style. Slightly lighter text color. That's much better. Now let's show the profile drop down list. Again, we copy the rectangle, menu items. Let's make links to particular help section, to the profile settings, and the logout link. Let's visually separate the active areas with lines, distribute it vertically, and aligned to the left. That's what we got. But of course we want this panel to be initially hidden and to be popped up smoothly on user picture click. For this you have a special kind of element in Xure. It's called dynamic panels. A dynamic panel is an ordinary group of elements but for this group you can set different states that show up on these certain conditions. Just select all the elements that belong to our drop down list and create a dynamic panel from them. As you can see, it immediately appeared in the list of panels. Later, we'll have a lot of panels, so in order not to get confused with the mess, you want to call it somehow. In this case, the drop down list can have only two simple states it is shown on the page and it is hidden. To do this you can either create a second state for the panel itself here and leave it blank or, and it's even a better way, to set the panel as hidden and then ask Xure to show it on click. We can call the panel by clicking on both the name and the user picture, but our user can miss, therefore the active zone needs to be increased. To do this, we will add another one particular element called hotspot over the entire area. In fact, it's this simple rectangle, but it's always transparent. We put it over the click area and check it. Here, the possible events are displayed you can assign them some actions. In this case, we need a click event. We find the action called show height. Through this search, we find our panel and specify toggle so that its appearance has always changed to the opposite. You can add some basic animation, say fade in 100 milliseconds. Let's check it. Everything's okay, but the user's name is no longer highlighted because we have blocked the text object with a hotspot. It's critical to understand how this multi layer thing works in Xure. The easiest way to solve this problem is to copy the action by clicking into the text field. Then we remove the hotspot and drag the text area to the hotspot boundaries. To fix the alignment of the text, you need to write new correct headings here in the field properties. Well, that's it. So we've just built the core of the prototype. We showed one panel 
and added some interaction. In the next video, we will do the rest.